So now that we know the way that this website is structured, we can start to write some Python code uh, to scrape the data from this website and extract the specific bits of information we want. First thing I'll do is I'll start a version of idle. So you go to your Python folder and select idle. And then we want to open a new script window. And the first part we'll cover is importing the HTML document from a website using Python. And for that, we use a library called URL lib. So to import it, we say URL lib2. And we can run this. First, I'll save our version to my desktop. And it should kind of uh, go through and not give any errors. And if it says the library doesn't exist, uh, you don't, it means you don't have this library and you should download it using the method that we covered in the first video. So now that we've imported URL lib, we can uh, download the data, the HTML data from a specific URL. So for the URL, we're going to specify the website we've been looking at. This is the TripAdvisor uh, attractions site that lists all the attractions on TripAdvisor for New York City. So to download the HTML, we copy the URL from the website and bring it in as a string into Python. So here we specified a URL uh, variable and we've copied the URL in here. And now um, we can download the HTML using the library and we do that by specifying another variable we can call it response and then URL lib2 which is the library dot URL open which is the specific function that will open that URL and for that we pass in our URL parameter and after we do that we can extract the HTML by specifying a new variable called data specifying the response variable we got from URL lib and doing read. And read is a common uh, Python function that will basically read in data from a file and store it as a, a list of str strings into data. So now that we've done that, uh, we can test it by hitting run and it should run the shell. It might take a while and what it's doing is basically opening the website and downloading all the HTML. To see that we've actually downloaded the exact HTML from the website, we can go ahead and print this data variable. And what this will do is it'll print out all the HTML from that website. And this, you shouldn't do this because it'll, it's a lot of text as we saw before, um, and it'll take a while, but just to double check it uh, once, we can print out the data. And here you see basically all the HTML data that's contained in that website. And our goal now that we have all the HTML is to use the beautiful soup library uh, to extract specific pieces of data using the structure we looked at before. The next step is to parse the HTML file we've downloaded using the beautiful soup library. So in order to import the beautiful soup library, we have to write uh, in the top of the script from beautiful soup import beautiful soup so this is the library we're importing and from that library we're importing these specific functions so when you call the functions as with url lib2 you just write this name to access all of those functions so we'll comment out our print line because we don't want to print the whole html and now we'll start using beautiful soup to parse the file so to do that, uh, to set up the soup file, we write soup, which is our variable, and beautiful soup, and we apply that to our data. So here, we're passing data into the beautiful soup library, and we're getting back this object, which is the soup file that can be parsed by the library. So if we run this now, it should run and download all the HTML. And now if we type in the type of the soup file, you see that it's a type of a class beautiful soup. So now we can use the library to access certain parts of that data. 
And the way that beautiful soup works is it basically parses that HTML file and looks for specific tags. So like in the last uh, lecture, we saw that all of HTML is structured through these uh, div and span tags, which have specific um, specific parameters. We can find the contents of those tags by asking for their parameters. So as a first example, uh, say we want to pull out a specific bit of text from the website. We go to our website here and say we just want to find this text within the website, so some kind of heading text. And in Google Chrome, we can go to, uh, we can highlight the text and go to inspect the element. And here we see that this piece of text is contained within this structure of a bunch of divs, and the final div is here and it has an ID of heading wrapper. So we can translate uh, that structure into beautiful soup and tell it where to find this specific bit of text, the things to do in New York City that we want. In order to do that in uh, beautiful soup, we can set a variable, result1, and then reference the soup structure, which we've created here, and then use the find all command to find a specific structure within that file. And in this case, we specify that we want a div tag, and then we can specify the parameters of that div tag that we want. And in our case, the key is id, and the value that that key should take is heading wrapper, okay? And then so this uh, this command will basically find all of the divs that have this ID and it will store them in a list of results of HTML code and it'll store that in result one. So if we run this code and we print out result one, we'll see that this came back with an array because of the, the square braces. And within that array is all of the divs with that ID. And since there's only one in the page, it, it basically returned an array of length one. So now what we can actually do is, given this array straight within the same line of code, we can access just the first element. And this is the same thing as writing result one equals result one zero. So it's the same thing, you can just append it directly onto the end of this. So if we do that and we run the code again, you can see that result one brought back just this div tag. So we can go further from here uh, because we don't want the whole piece of HTML. We actually just want uh, this bit of code. We can actually dig deeper within this result and use beautiful soup to find further structures within that result. So here we can type in result two uh, equals result one and we've already uh, index the first value so result one will contain this piece of HTML and you can work with it just like you worked with the entire soup. Uh, basically you say find all and this time we want to find the h1 tag which is contained within our structure. So we can say find uh, h1 and since here uh, we only have eight, one h1 tag it doesn't matter what these are we can specify them but we can leave them out and it'll just basically return all the h1 values and then from there, we again want to take just the first value in that resulting array. So we run this again, and now ask for result 2. It'll give us just that h1 tag. So we're pretty close here. We have the, the lowest level tag that contains that text. Now all we have to do is use another beautiful soup command to extract that string uh, from that uh, resulting HTML. So finally, we have result 3 equals result 2 dot and you just say dot string. And dot string is a beautiful soup command that will return the string within that tag that you specify in result two. If you run this, type in result three, it'll just bring that tag. And this is pretty close. Some of the U and these spaces are kind of formatting things that, that come out of HTML. In order to get rid of those, once you get the string, you do uh, the strip command. And the strip command is built into Python it will just strip all the white spaces and uh, tabs and returns from the ends of each string. So if we do this, we get just this tag. Don't worry about this U, this is just means that the string is encoded and it's the formal definition of the string in Python. But actually if you print out result3.strip, it'll come back with just a string. 